there are many ways to achieve an aesthetic physique, right? There's bodybuilding training, there's weightlifting, whatever the case may be, but there's a surefire way to gain aesthetics without the need of that type of equipment and being able to do it within the comfort of your own home, right? And that would be the use of calisthenics. So how can you attain, attain aesthetics with calisthenics, which it's very simple, it's very easy, and I have like a whole list of stuff here, and I'll kind of go through that with you guys, right? So when it comes to training for aesthetics, the definition can really be up to your own preference. Some people might prefer to have maybe like wider waist, waist or an X taper, whatever the case may be, just depending on what you think looks good. But when it comes to the general standard definition of aesthetics, when it comes to most people, we're gonna be usually thinking of certain factors such as like having wide shoulders and back, um, having a narrow waist, which is going to help with the V taper along with having the wide shoulders. Then there's going to be having a sculpted chest and sculpted abs. And then lastly, a low percent of uh, body fat, right? So a low body fat being lean, right? So when it comes to attaining these results with calcinics, like I just said, it's incredibly easy, right? It's, it, it's not easy, but it's simple. It's very simple, right? Because working out is not an easy thing for most people to do, but the process is very simple. Building muscle is very simple, right? So, and it's gonna kind of come naturally due to the nature of calisthenics. Most of these exercises are compound exercises and they hit many muscle groups at once. And so therefore you kind of get more bang for your buck, right? And that way um, you don't have to worry too much about getting into little tiny details of becoming aesthetic, right? So I'm gonna take you through uh, how you can achieve your desired aesthetics by going through you know, certain exercises and even dietary changes, right? So I'm gonna start off with the back. It was the first thing that I mentioned. The back is the number one body part when it comes to achieving aesthetics. People think it's the shoulders, but that's not the case, right? Because when people think of aesthetics, they think of that upside down Dorito shape, right? That V taper. And how you achieve that V taper is through having a wider back, it's specifically the lats. The lats are responsible for having that that width, right, when you like flare from the front, right, when people look at you from the front or from the back side, there is, you know, they push out your arms almost, right, and they push out your shoulders, right? So exercises for your lats or just for your back in general, your entire back would be pull-ups. So pull-ups, number one exercise for the back, it is the king of all back exercises, right? If you cannot do pull-ups yet, I would say do some pull-up adjacent exercises such as like assisted pull-ups um, with a machine. Maybe you could do uh, banded pull-ups, right? And you can also do uh, lat pull-downs, right? That's kind of similar, but at some point you should be doing body weight pull-ups or hell, even weighted pull-ups, right? You know, if you can get to that point. But if you're not training with a lot of equipment, then of course you just have access to a pull-up bar, then just doing pull-ups is fine and you know, getting a perfect form, especially a form where you arch your back and you try and get your chest to the bar almost, right? That's going to work a lot of your lats and a lot of your mid, back, and traps and shoulders. Another exercise is the chin-up, right? So the chin-up, you are having your palms facing toward you, and this is going to include more biceps. But the thing is with the chin-up is, since you have your arms closer in, and when you extend up in that top range of motion, that's going to stretch your lats out even further. And a great way to make this exercise even harder would be to do them in an L-sit, right? So not just doing chin-ups, but doing L-sit chin-ups. And by doing L-sit chin-ups, you get your core activated, of course, but you also have a much greater stretch on your lats. So they're gonna have more potential to grow when it comes to doing chin-ups, right? And then my last exercise for the back would be rows. Rows is kind of like the finisher. So it's like pull-ups is, is like your main thing. And then chin-ups is like, assisting the pull-ups and then doing rows is kind of like to complement everything right so when you do rows you get to have more emphasis on your shoulder especially when you go out in a 45 degree angle which is where your rear delt lines up to and then you're going to be hitting more of your mid back right uh, muscles like your traps lower traps mid traps that you know pull-ups can't really hit that well um, no chin-ups, chin-ups don't really hit those type of muscles, right? So if you want a nice sculpted back with arches and valleys, then you're going to want to try and include rows in your routine along with doing chin-ups and pull-ups. 
So the next thing is gonna be shoulders. So shoulders, it's kind of a guarantee that you're gonna get shoulders from calisthenics, right? Um, when you're just doing push-ups, deficit push-ups, different push-up variations, and you're doing dips, right? Deficit dips, uh, straight bar dips, whatever the case may be, your shoulders are gonna grow. Um, but you're gonna have an emphasis on your front delt, right? Most people that already work out doing a lot of pushing movements, we push out in front of us or we push overhead. Um, so we're gonna have a lot of front delt action going on, right? And the thing is when it comes to push-ups and dips, they're not true shoulder exercises because they don't work the shoulder uh, single uh, like by itself, right? Uh, Push-ups where it's gonna work your chest, shoulders, and triceps, same thing with dips. Dips is gonna have like maybe more of an emphasis on your triceps, but if you want like a, like the king of calisthenics exercises when it comes to shoulders, you want to do the pike push-up. The pike push-up is very important uh, for shoulder growth and shoulder development. You probably um, want to try and incorporate that uh, with your pushing movements. It is a lot harder than doing dips and push-ups, but if you just get stronger in push-ups and dips, you're gonna be able to build up to them very well. Um, and you can start doing like deficit pike push-ups if you're strong enough, but just doing them off the floor would be uh, sufficient enough. Pike push-ups are still hard for me, right? Um, but they're a very challenging exercise and they're going to really get you some good delts. And then a great variation of the pike push-up would be kind of like the like the the wide, you know, flared elbows, right? Where you're kind of trying to, it almost mimics a behind the neck press. So this is going to get more of your medial delt. So that way you're gonna build like this roundness of your shoulders, the cap delt look through that type of exercise, right? Without having to necessarily isolate that muscle, right? One thing that calisthenics isn't the best at unless you have, let's say access to rings would be isolations, right? So you have to get creative in the compound movements that you do in order to emphasize certain muscle groups, right? And when you kind of get that lateral, you know, deltoid, more developed is going to improve your aesthetics because it's going to extend your shoulders, right? And your lats are already big because you do a lot of pull-ups and it's going to uh, encourage more of that V-taper look. So the next thing is a narrow waist. So having a narrow waist along with wide shoulders is going to add to your aesthetics. Uh, but how, do, how does one get a narrow waist, right? So before I mention anything, at Elsa, right? So you want to start off with, let's say, just look at this. Let's let's look at your waistline. So if you're overweight, you know, for one, you gotta lose weight. You gotta you gotta lose weight, man. You gotta get that belly fat off. Um, if you're skinny fat, if you're fat fat, you know, obese, whatever, etc., you should try and lose weight, and that's gonna include some dietary habits, some dietary changes, right? So. The thing is, when it comes to that, you want to start to try and eating, I'm gonna say like a lot more better healthy food options, right? So of course just exercise, but some people might have, let's say, a thing with their genetics, where their genetics, you know, oh, I just have naturally have a wide blocky waist, right? And that can be the case for some people. Some people's obliques pop out, but here's the thing. The Mr. Bodybuilder himself, Arnold Schwarzenegger, he had a wide waist. But by training, right, so by getting leaner, by, you know, widening his shoulders, right, by doing shoulder variations, shoulder uh, movements, and by doing pull-ups, he was able to kind of almost make like this optical illusion with his body that made it appear that he had a narrow waist, right? And that happens over time as you continue to build muscle. But before you bl try and blame your genetics, right, because again, you might be like 200 pounds overweight, you might be 50 pounds overweight, you might be... 25 pounds overweight. You just gotta, you just gotta get get leaner. You just gotta lose some weight, you know? Work out, lose some weight, eat right. Um, I always thought that I had like this blocky wide waist, but then I got like really lean and I realized like I have this incredibly narrow waist. So it just all depends. Like, you know, you just need to kind of cut down a little bit. Maybe, you know, when you bulk up and when then when you see yourself cut down, you might see that like, okay, maybe I don't have like this weird blocky waist or whatever the case may be. But then again, some people like having a blocky waist because they just like that look or whatever. whatever. I don't know, whatever. They like the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle look. So next up is the chest. Chest, very simple. 
Um, when it comes to my chest development, I've just used push-ups and dips. Um, one great variation of push-ups is deficit push-ups. Um, deficit push-ups, this is where you get, let's say, uh, parallel, you know, parallettes or something that can raise your hands off the ground and leave space for your chest in the middle so that way when you go down, you're able to extend your hand back up because when we do regular push-ups from the floor, we, you know, what's going to happen is like, let's say maybe our chest is going to run into the ground or our nose or our chin is going to run into the ground and then that kind of cuts the range of motion, right? But we don't have to worry about that when we do deficit push-ups. Now, if you are trying to like, you know, oh, I just want to do pull-up bar on the floor, then that's, you know, that's fine. You can still improvise with other household items like books or breaks, right? I use it. I like to use cinder blocks. Um, but you can still get enough just by doing push-ups, you know, just off the ground. You know, there's a lot of like people who do like who like or like street at street athletes, right? They're calisthenics athletes or they're like they do like prisoner style workouts and they have like massive chest just from doing push-ups alone, doing half reps, you know, just playing around with different forms of intensity with that simple basic movement, right? And dips. Dips is a great movement for your chest. It's gonna help get that lower pectorals right because um, when we do a lot of like just regular push-ups, we're gonna get like our mid and our upper chest, but we don't like we tend to neglect the lower chest, which the lower chest is gonna allow for kind of like that superhero look, right? You know, when you look at a lot of superheroes, they have like this over exaggerated chest, and it's gonna kind of like lead to like that plate of armor look, right? If you want a nice plate of armor on your upper body, then you should be trying to do dips and deficit push-ups, right? Those are my two like recommended variations when it comes to building, you know, a nice sculpted chest. Now, after chest, we have abs, six packs, abdominals. So with calisthenics, many of the compound exercises are just going to hit your core anyways. So doing push-ups is kind of like you're in a plank position. When you do LSA chin-ups or when you do chin-ups in general and you're engaging your body properly, you're going to feel your core, right? So, but if you really want to carve out, you know, that Greek God mix section, right? Uh, I don't know if you can see the, the little images I have up. If you really want to carve out that, you know, this, that divine midsection, you're going to want to do, you know, sit-ups and leg raises, right? Leg raises have been a staple um, exercise in just my routine since day one of training. I believe that they're how I got my six pack along with like, you know, of course, cutting down and stuff like that. Um, but again, some people would think like, you know, you'd have to be lean in order to have a six pack, but you don't necessarily have to. You can have buyer for, uh, higher body fat uh, with having abs because it's a muscle and the muscle is going to protrude out through the fat. Um, so if anything, having abs that at a higher body fat percentage is going to kind of make you look less fat when you train them, of course, with enough intensity um, and you try and progress, right? So your core is kind of what ties your physique together. You know, this is my personal opinion, but I feel like it's definitely like this thing that's agreed upon, you know, without having to say anything. You look at a lot of movies, a lot of comics, a lot of depictions of, you know, cool Chad guys, whatever, um, you know, and they have, they take their shirt off and it's a shirtless scene and they have a six pack, right? They have pecs, they have shoulders, they have arms, but they have a crazy six pack. And the girl's like, But they're not saying that because, like, you know, they can't say that, you know, whatever. Uh, the audience is like, oh, wow, he looks amazing. And the guys are like, wow, man, I have to get like that. And then they, you know, go on eating Doritos, you know, increasing their waistline, whatever. But again, also, it's very simple. Two exercises, right? You can really do one exercise since, again, calisthenics is going to hit, like, your core a lot with a lot of movements. Um... But if you, again, if you want to have more emphasis on it, I, you know, hanging leg raises or sit-ups, I would recommend hanging leg raises because you get that shoulder extension, right? You're stretching out your spine. Um, this will kind of put a more emphasis on the stretch on your abdomen because your legs are hanging below, you know, below your body. Um, you're working your grip strength as well. And then you're flexing your spine fully by bringing your legs up to your, or trying to bring your legs up to your chest. Isolations with a question mark, isolations, right? So like I just mentioned, if you're not training with a lot of equipment, if you're not training with gymnastic rings, right? Which you can access many exercises with gymnastic rings, 
how do you isolate? So when it comes to using compound exercises, calisthenics compound exercises to isolate, you want to do different variations of these movements. So push-ups, for example, you can do diamond push-ups, right? So diamond push-ups, it's going to put an extension on your tricep and then it's going to be worked a lot more than let's say if you were just doing a standard push-up. Um, again, if you're doing dips or if you're doing deficit pike push-ups, if you're moving with a full range of motion, you get back, right? You get back and your triceps you get just about the same range of motion um, when it comes to, you know, like similar to doing diamond push-ups, right? But if you just want more emphasis on the triceps, then, you know, you're going to get some good triceps with diamond push-ups, even dips. Um, like if I do like a bunch of dips, right? bunch of high rep dips go to failure. I'll feel my triceps, you know, I'll feel my chest and shoulders, but I'll feel my triceps as well. So doing dips is also a pretty good tricep builder. And chin-ups. So by doing close grip chin-ups and doing them in a specific way where you're kind of focusing on your arms. So you want to hold the bar and you kind of want to twist the bar. Like you're trying to twist the bar. This will engage your, your biceps more if you see here the muscle is kind of like going inward as I'm twisting and you that's how you want to kind of grip the bar as you're going up and that's going to engage more biceps, right? Now there's nothing that is better than like pure isolation, let's say on gymnastic rings, such as doing tricep extensions or bicep curls. Um, but again, like if you're just trying to get like minimal equipment and stuff like that, you can still get pretty nice sculpted arms um, with just doing those two movements or that I just mentioned, like diamond push-ups and you know some chin-ups, right? Or just again focusing and getting stronger and getting better at the compound movements, such as chin-ups, pull-ups, push-ups, dips, etc. Um, now you're probably thinking, like, you know, why did I only mention arms for isolations? When it comes to isolating, most people think of arms, right? Most people will think of like, oh, uh, if you just do compound exercises, you'll get a spider physique, right? So spider physique is like. You know, you have a great, you know, torso, but you have skinnier arms. Um, but again, if you're not trying to train with that much equipment, maybe if you're trying to challenge yourself to train with like minimal equipment, those variations that I just mentioned, those will help, you know, to put more emphasis and to put more focus on your arms, especially when you're doing these movements with really good technique. Now, next up, body fat. This one is very important. I'm gonna have to rely more on my notes here. So after everything I just mentioned, you know, body fat is a very important factor. Your leanness, right? Your body fat level, right? Having a low body fat can help reveal muscles that were built, you know, that you built at a higher body fat. So you might have been bulking, and you know, let's say after a year of bulking, after six months of bulking, you've built muscle, and now you want to cut down. When you cut down, it's almost as if like you're carving away at like a stone slab, revealing like the Greek god sculpture, right? So again. You can't just cut down, think you're going to have a bunch of muscles, whatever. You need to build muscle, you know, maybe whilst you're at a certain weight, then cut down. Um, but again, if you're overweight to begin with, you should be trying to lose the weight in general, um, just so you can be at a healthier body weight. So then that way you can work out more efficiently. Um, and then let's say, let's say you were two, let's say you were 215, 215 pounds. Um, that's overweight. Uh, like just mostly fat, right? Then you get down to, let's say about 170, maybe one, 160. Then maybe you can try and start trying to, you know, gain back to gain back weight, you know, maybe try and get back to 200 pounds, but having most of that weight come from muscle, not from fat, right? And then you can cut down and then you're gonna have built more quality muscle because you were at a healthier body weight whilst you were bulking, right? And you had healthier habits because you were working out. And then when you cut down again, you're gonna look better, you're gonna look even better than when you first initially lost weight. So again, so getting leaner, right? It's not an easy thing to do. We have so many things when it comes to our food and our food intake and what we like to eat, quote unquote, like to eat. We can be addicted to certain substances, substances that are within food items, right? You can't even reasonably call these things food because they're just so ultra, ultra processed. And that's what most of like the standard American diet includes is these ultra processed foods. And, you know, these are foods that some people don't even like think are unhealthy. So it's like, there's like white rice, there's pasta, there's like white bread or flour that's in a lot of these ingredients, right? Um, 
you know, uh, processed meats, stuff like that. And just complete junk food that we might eat on a day to day basis, right? You want to kind of cut out these foods, right? So I just mentioned like bread, like especially like, you know, bread with white flour, pasta, white rice, oats, refined sugars and trans fats, right? So a lot of oils, a lot of oily stuff. So instead of eating these things, right, you want to eat a diet that's rich in whole foods, right? Whole plant based foods, right? They're very nutrient dense and you can get fuller and more satiated off them. And this way, um, you're not gonna gain so much weight from eating like, you know, uh, a plate, just one plate of like food, right? Um, and then another thing is, so when it comes to these foods, it's going to be like a lot of like beans, like so legumes, right? So like chickpeas, black beans, lentils, whatever, uh, leafy greens, so like kale, spinach, broccoli, whatever, anything that's green and natural, you know, you should probably have it. A lot of fruits, um, a lot of whole grains. Like I said, rice is a grain, but it's not a whole grain. So it spikes our blood sugar levels and it's gonna want us to eat more of it. And it's not as nutritionally dense as like, let's say brown rice or quinoa or spelt or something like that, right? So you might wanna do more research on other whole grains. Um, and then seeds, right? So chia seeds, flax seeds, these things like that, they have protein in them and they have omegas in them. So like your omega-3s, omega-6s, your fatty acids, right? That you want to be consuming, which is just gonna help like with your brain function and stuff like that. Uh, so you want to be eating these things. And not only will you get leaner, but you'll see a better improvement in a lot of other health factors, right? So not only are you taking inches off of your waist, but you're also, you're also adding years to your life. Now, this is probably something I have not mentioned yet, or actually I haven't mentioned at all, especially in reference to all the muscle groups that I mentioned to gain aesthetics, and that is legs. So why haven't I mentioned anything about legs? All right, let's get into that. Um, when it comes to leg training, build them however you want. You know, you can do, you could do big boy back squats. You can do just a bunch of high rep squats, which I like to do. I like to do both of them. Um, you can find like other calisthenics movements like pistol squats, CC squats, things like that, body weight training. Um, you can do whatever you want, right? So it's like, when it comes to aesthetics and how we think of like, uh, for a male having an aesthetic physique, we don't necessarily look at their legs. It's all upper body focus, right? Which is why so many gym bros go into the gym and they like, they just dread doing legs or they just train their upper body all the time or whatever the case may be. But to have a well-balanced physique, you do want to train your legs. Now, you don't have to have big, massive bodybuilder legs, but you shouldn't neglect them at all. You should at least hit them uh, from like once to twice a week, right? You don't have to go crazy on them or whatever, but you should push with enough intensity to allow for growth within those muscle groups. And that can just be something as simple as doing squats and deadlifts. But again, if you're trying to do calisthenics, you can still do squats, bodyweight squats, you can do sissy squats, you can do um, hip thrust right from the floor. Um, you can do like Nordic hamstring curls by anchoring your feet down on something. These are things that you can all do at home. Um, if you have access to rings, you can do leg curls. And by doing leg curls, that's gonna allow for you to kind of like work your hamstring and your posterior chain. But again, like again, you can do sprints, you can do box jumps, you can do athletic things. Maybe if you don't really care too much about building your legs, you can kind of build up your athletic performance so that way you're gonna have like a better cardiovascular health while you're also trying to build your legs at the same time. And yeah, so when it comes to also training your lower body, it's going to allow for you to hit your upper body harder. And why is that? Usually it's very painful to train legs. Um, you know, people like, you know, they dread leg days at the gym, right? So. The reason why they do is because it's painful. It's very painful, right? Um, you know, not so super painful. You know, once you work up to it, you know, you can build a tolerance to it and now you're used to it, but it's it's not easy, right? It requires a lot more mental toughness, a lot more discipline to hit your legs on a consistent basis. But when you do that, you know, once or twice a week, your upper body training is going to feel like nothing compared to your lower body training. And so that way you can allow like put more energy and put more intensity into your upper body training because your lower body training you know is a lot more intense because that's just the nature 
of most lower body training days. And to end note, right, to end this all off, none of the tips I have given you here will have zero effect. They will have zero effect if you don't train hard enough and you don't take your diet and nutrition seriously, right? Sure, maybe you can eat burgers all day. Sure, maybe you can, I don't know, go out, drink, smoke, whatever, you know, and maybe still get a six pack. But for the quality amount of muscle for you to build to actually feel better in your own skin, you want to be following this, right? You want to train hard enough in order for your muscles to grow to the stimulus, right? Because if you're not training to failure or close to failure or past failure, you're not gonna gain any muscle, right? If you're not training with enough intensity, your muscles just aren't going to grow. So you need to be able to hit the gym hard. That way you can make progress. So many people will go and train for a year and they won't make any progress. And they'll be like, oh, I have bad genetics. But it just turns out that they were training horribly. They were just training really badly, right? So again, the key to building muscle is training hard and then eating right, right? And then sleeping, sleeping well, you know, try and get, try and get, you know, six to eight hours of sleep, right? Six good straight, you know, to six hours of sleep or eight hours of sleep, whatever. So that way you can recover and you're refreshed and then you can hit your next gym session just as hard as you did last time, right? So thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope this has been very helpful to you to achieve, you know, Greek God status uh, just from your home. Um, but again, it's not gonna hurt to invest in equipment and stuff like that. Um, like gymnastic rings here with gymnastic rings, you can access a whole myriad of exercises. You can probably start isolating your muscles like doing tricep extensions or bicep curls. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Peace out. See you in the next one.